Alright folks, today we're going to talk about metallic bonds. Those would be pretty obvious of what those have to do with. Sure, they have to do with metals. Alright, so metallic bonds are when one metal bonds to another metal or within the same metal. So for example, here you're seeing on the left, you're seeing aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is pure aluminum, uh, so that is one metal bonded to itself, aluminum bonded to itself. When you look at gold rings, like a wedding ring or something like I'm wearing, um, rings are not pure gold. They have to be mixed with other things like silver because gold is just too soft as a metal. So uh, they have to go mix it with something else. So this is actually a metal bonded with another metal all mixed together in solution. All right. Uh, what happens with a metal is the, the electrons really stop belonging to an individual atom of the metal. They kind of float all between them and they kind of move. And the electrons just kind of form this, the best way to describe it that I've heard is a sea of electrons. Right? And so the positive, um, the positive protons and stuff are in the middle and there are electrons that, that do belong to the atom, but once you get to the valence electrons, the valence electrons are the ones that are on the outermost shell and they just kind of move around. Okay, So the electron clouds really don't belong to any one metal so they can move which gives it the ability to conduct electricity because electricity is simply electrons. So our bonding in metals, if we think of metals and we put some force on a metal, what's going to happen is the sea of electrons is going to kind of shift around and the metals are simply going to move and the electrons are going to move and everything's still going to be happy. And that's why you can take metal and you can reshape it, you can bend it, you can pound it into a sheet, etc. Okay. However, when you take something which is an ionic compound, like we saw in our last podcast, and we put some force on these guys, they're going to move, and all of a sudden when they move, these two negative charges, the two, let's say if this is sodium chloride, these two chlorides are going to be close to each other. And when they get close to each other down here, they're going to repel each other. And as a result, the ionic crystal shatters. And that's why you get their very clean breaks on ionic crystals like we looked at in our last podcast. All right, so elemental metals. We have metal atoms and they can be arranged in very compact and orderly patterns and they keep their names. For example, chromium. Chromium over here arranges itself this way in forms of atoms. And gold is slightly different and zinc is slightly different. But they do come up with these patterns that um, hold them together. Now, we also have alloys. Alloys are cool because they're mixtures. They are composed of two or more elements, and at least one of them has to be a metal. Alloys are important because their properties are often superior to those of their component elements, and we give them common special, special common names. For example, let's just talk about one which is gold. Right? Now, when someone looks at my wedding ring, they say, it's gold. Well, it's really not. It's 14 karat gold. So it's actually gold and other stuff. Pure gold, 24 karat gold, is too soft, which we already said. So, alloys are mixtures that give us uh, different properties, which help us. So, for example, we can take brass, which is copper, a mixture of copper and zinc. Okay, and so we get this shiny brass color, and typically it doesn't um, it doesn't discolor much, whereas copper does discolor. We'll talk about that in a moment. Pewter. Pewter is an example of something that was used oh, 100, 200 years ago a lot for uh, drinking glasses and for pitchers and actually for plates. So if you go back into New England, for example, a couple hundred years ago, you'll find a lot of pewter plates and goblets and that kind of thing. They're mainly tin, but there's other stuff in them as well. Steel. We use steel a lot today. We use it for wire rims of cars, for example, or for um, washers or bolts or whatever and it's made out of iron with some carbon thrown in. Now the problem with steel is it rusts. So we of course came up with the concept of stainless steel. Now stainless steel is similar but it has chromium in it, at least 11 percent chromium and that keeps it from rusting and we use this for pots and pans or for a turkey fryer which is what I use it for and uh, stainless steel sinks for example are all examples of stainless steel. 14 karat gold we already mentioned that we could use because it is harder than 24 karat gold than pure gold so uh, we can make things out of it for jewelry. Alright, 
So let's look at the properties of metals. We kind of glossed over this last time. I'm going to go into it in a little bit more detail here. Uh, you need to remember these. The properties of metals is that they have a shine to them. Well, a pure metal like copper will have a shine to it, a nice shiny luster, but notice all of these other pennies. Well, they've been exposed to the elements, and they aren't any more pure copper. What you're seeing on the outside is not pure copper, because pure copper has a shine to it. Right? So if you look, for example, at the Statue of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty has this green stuff on it, we call it a patina, and that is because it has been exposed to the elements for 100 years. Okay, whereas if you go on the inside of the Statue of Liberty, and this is a picture of the inside of the Statue of Liberty, this is inside the crown of the Statue of Liberty, and this is actually copper on the inside of the crown, and it's brown. It's that nice shiny brown color that you see because it has not been exposed to the elements. Another property of metals is that they conduct electricity. So if you look at an electric wire, for example, uh, which is made typically out of copper or aluminum, or you look at a plug which has a steel or a stainless steel or a zinc prong to it, uh, these all conduct electricity. Uh, metals conduct heat. Some metals conduct heat better than others. Uh, copper is used often on the outside of pans because it conducts heat so well. Um, it's also pretty. So that's why we use copper, because it conducts heat so well. Uh, metals are also malleable. That means you can pound them into a sheet, you can make them flat, and if you look, you will see a lot of these in Roanoke, where you see the roof of a house, and it has some copper on it, some copper sheathing on it, to make it look pretty. Again, once it's exposed to the elements, it doesn't look anywhere near as pretty as this, but when it's first put up, it's gorgeous. And metals are also ductile. They can typically be drawn into wire, most of them. So if you look at copper, for example, it can be drawn into wire. All right. So in summary, what must be present for a metallic bond? You must have at least one metal. What holds, um, and typically it's multiple metals, and they're stuck together. What holds the atoms together? Well, it's that sea of electrons that holds the atoms all together. And because those sea of electrons can shield the positives, the protons from each other, they can move, and so that gives it the ability to bend. You should know what an alloy is, that it's a mixture of metals, and why we use them because the properties are different. And what are the five properties of metals when we talk about things like they're malleable, they're ductile, they have shine, luster, they conduct heat, they conduct electricity. That's what you need to know about the five properties of metals. Okay, if you have any questions, see me in class, and um, have a great afternoon. Bye.